This is Channel 9, and I'm your host, Amanda Greenhart. Jackson is now choosing his successor, Martin Van Buren, who we believe is a great candidate for our next national leader. There's been some talk about Jackson being an incompetent leader, but we are here to debunk those beliefs. Going back to the election of 1828, Jackson understood values of the virtuous farmer and each individual's liberties. He embodied the aristocracy of merit as shown by his hard work from destitution, showing how he understands hardships that are relatable to the common man. And in July 10th of 1832, Jackson addressed the Senate, stating that the humble members of society, the farmers, mechanics, and laborers, have a right to complain of the injustice of their government. At his inauguration, Jackson welcomed people into the White House, essentially placing himself to be equal to his citizens. He's working towards the will of his people, and he sees how it is important to avoid corruption by government officials who work towards their private interests. Later in that presidency, he loosened property requirements, expanded suffrage rights, and giving us a voice in our government. These are all ideals of the Founding Fathers that Jackson is executing, whether that's by solidifying Crevacore's assertion that here man is free, or Jefferson's vision for an agricultural country. Now we have James Winston, the fourth, with the DC social structure. Thanks, Amanda. I'm here in Washington, D.C. reporting on the social structure and the Eaton Affair that has received much speculation. Many have claimed that Jackson was being impractical about shutting down the social scene of D.C. However, Calhoun and the other congressmen have ganged up against Jackson and mercilessly criticized the Secretary of War, Eaton, and his wife, Peggy. When truthfully, Jackson was standing up for another man and his wife. Because of this cold political society, Rachel, rest her soul, was patronized mentally until her death. Jackson was only exercising his moral roots by shutting down the social scene here in D.C. Back to you, Amanda. Thanks, Jameis. Now we have Bertha Smith with the plight of the Bank of the United States and her economic situation. Thanks, Amanda. I'm here at the Bank of the United States that Jackson is shutting down. Many have accused Jackson of ruining our national economy. However, Jackson is simply protecting us from oppression and preventing us from losing our hard-earned money. Economists have expressed that the Bank of the United States is only helping those who who are rich get richer. In Jackson's veto message of the bill of the Bank of the United States, he stated, equality of talents of education or of wealth cannot be produced by human institutions. This bank system is of no use to the common laboring citizen. Jackson states that every man is equally entitled to protection by law, but when the law, which is in this case, has manifested itself as the Bank of the United States is unconstitutional, action must be taken to ensure justice to every citizen. Jackson is listening to our concerns. He understands that the South should not be taxed for something that they, should, that they do not benefit from. Back to you, man. Thanks, Bertha. Now we have Arnold Montgomery with the situation of the Indian Removal Act of 1830. For years, Americans have been troubled by the occupation of the native savages in the state of Georgia. In his message on Indian removal to Congress six years ago on December 6, Jackson stated that freeing this land from the Indians will allow our surrounding states to, quote, advance rapidly in population, wealth, and power. The bountiful land insufficiently being used in Georgia is hindering the growth of our cotton economy. Jackson is trying to help fuel the textile industry since demand has exponentially increased. He is, in fact, being altruistic by sacrificing land at the expense of the United States, a land that is complex civilizations. These Indians should be thankful as Jackson is giving them an opportunity to enrich their lives in land that is more suitable for their lifestyles. He's relieve, relieving the biological pressures that could result from limited and land supply by placing more of our dense population in the new western land territories. Back to you, Amanda. Thank you, Arnold. Jackson was an incredible leader who expressed the values of our founding fathers and represented the true values of our government. And that's all we have for you today. My name is Amanda Greenheart and this has been Channel 9 News. We'll see you next time.